Hey, Justin Dyson here at Dyson Apiaries. Today we're going to talk about supering our colonies, getting them ready for the honey flow. Stick right with us. All right, like I said, today we're going to talk about supering up our colonies and getting them ready for the honey flow. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we posted a video about reducing our colonies down to a single deep and for the brew chamber and then stacking surplus supers above that. But I didn't really talk much about what do we put in up here above them and how do we go about doing that. So today we're going to talk about that. It doesn't matter if you start with that single deep configuration or not. That's the way I choose to run my, my honeybees through the, uh, through the nectar flows. But so what I have here is I have my deep for my, for my brood chamber and then I have a queen excluder. Just in case you don't know what a queen excluder is, right here is a queen excluder. Um, this is a wood bound queen excluder. They also make a metal one, which I have on some of these hives that doesn't have the wood around it. It's just, it just has a crimped piece of metal around the outside. They're much cheaper than the wood bound. Um, I prefer the wood but I can't afford the wood. So I have a lot of the, uh, a lot of the metal ones running now. These were some of my early ones that I, I purchased early on in our operation, but I do really prefer these because I think the B space is better um, and it doesn't hit the frames on the bottom. But anyway, this is a wood bound. They also make a metal bound, you choose. So what I do next is whatever I'm gonna establish for my brood, above that, I'm gonna put a queen excluder. Now. There's a couple ways to go about this. Some people will move their top brood box up if they leave two brood boxes up above the excluder, put the excluder between those two boxes. And what that does is encourage the bees to go on through the queen excluder and then you can come back a few weeks later and move that box back down or you can extract that honey if you choose. But uh, depending on what, what treatments you use and stuff like that. So that's up to you, but regardless, when it gets ready for surplus supers, we need to have a queen excluder above those, above that brood nest. Some people will say you don't need a queen excluder. Let's address that too. In my configuration, if you don't put a queen excluder here, you will have brood in your surplus supers. We have to have a queen excluder. I have run double deeps through the, through the nectar flows and had brood in my surplus supers above that. I like queen excluders. Not everybody likes them. Some people call them honey excluders. So the next thing we need to do is decide what, what kind of surplus supers are we gonna use? And there's three primary sizes we've talked about in other videos before, but you have the deep, the medium, and the shallow. Those are the three primary sizes. There's actually another size that's pretty uncommon that's kind of in between these, but anyway, this is the three most common sizes. A lot of people prefer the shallow super because of the weight, um, about 30 pounds of honey. You come out of a shallow super and of course you go up from there and, and I, I, I think the the estimates for a deep are, are anywhere from 70 to 90 pounds of honey in a deep give or take either way that box gets really heavy if we're using that for surplus honey and so most of the time people run these as the bottom box for our deep and it's really efficient but anyway we have three different sizes the next thing we got to decide on is how many frames are we going to put in there so you probably heard now I'm gonna talk about 10 frame and you can you can kind of use the same method with, uh, with eight frame, but just drop it down to eight, eight and seven. All right, so you're gonna hear people talk about 10 frame configuration and nine frame configuration or eight and seven. All right, and what that simply means is right here I have a, a, a shallow super set up in a, in a nine frame configuration. And I actually have the little nailed in um, cleats here to keep the frame spaced appropriately. So that's a nine frame. And when you use a nine frame, you'll, I, I've seen some people run nine frame in their, in their brood box. I'm not a fan of that. I don't really see the point in running nine frame in a brood box. A Langstroth hive is built to have the appropriate bee space with the, the dividers on the frame so that when you put them together 
there's an appropriate amount of bee space between the two combs. The bees, no matter how much room you give them between there, they're only going to draw out a brood cell to the depth that they need for that brood cell, for a worker cell. And, and with a nine frame configuration, that's way too wide for a normal brood cell. So I do not prefer to run nine frames in the bottom. Um, honestly, I think it leads to mashed bees because what they're going to do is they're going to swell out the top edge of that comb in a brood box. And then the worker cells that they have brood in are going to be the same depth down low, even with the bar here. But those are going to be swelled out. And when you put your frames back together, you're going, you can mash bees between them. If you set a hive up with 10 frames like it's designed, the space is correct and, and the bees won't build anything between there. Five, six things to three eighths of an inch is the appropriate bee space. So you may not have those uh, nine frame spacers built into your supers like we were showing you. And if you don't have those, they make a handy little device here. It's just a nine frame spacer. They also make one for an eight frame hive. So it would be a seven frame spacer. And that just allows you to set those frames at, at the appropriate distance apart. Kind of got to get them closer. The tool doesn't want to cooperate. But we can take that tool right there and we can space those frames out properly as it's sitting on the hive and get the proper nine frame spacing even if we don't have the little spacers nailed in like this one does. So the next question kind of becomes, why do we run nine frames? Well, if you think about this piece of comb here that's, that's drawn out to the edge of this bar, we can see that. If we run an uncapping knife or, or, or an uncap or anything on that comb, it's hard to get to the capping because it's below or it's even with the level of this wood. So what we do is we run nine frames and they will draw the comb out a little bit wider than that wood. And that allows us to run that knife down out here and slice that capping off really nicely and it's less frames to deal with, right? So, can you always run nine frame? The answer is no. So if you do not have any drawn comb like this, and all you have is, I think I have one here. You have foundation. That one's got a hole in it, but you have foundation. If you stack out nine frames of foundation the bees see that space is inappropriate what they're going to do is they're going to build cross combs and everything else like they would naturally so if we're putting 10 if we're putting all foundation in a super we need to run that in a 10 frame configuration to where the frames are tight together until such time as they get that drawn out um now there's a there's a little trick we can use sometimes if we have some drawn comb but we really don't have enough what we can do is we can take out every other frame. And I know this is a medium frame in a shallow super, but I just want to show you. We can take out every other frame so that here we have a drawn frame. Here we have a foundation frame. And then here we have a drawn frame. And we can do that all the way across, staggering frames. And you can still get by with putting that on in a nine frame configuration. And I've had pretty good success with supering bees like that. For one, it really encourages the bees to come up on that on that comb and start on that foundation because they have drawn comb there. Sometimes bees are a little reluctant to come up on brand new foundation. And sometimes it'll kind of cause them to go into swarm mode. They don't want to go through the queen excluder. They don't want to come up and draw comb. And then they go into swarm mode. So ideally, so let's talk about this now. Ideally, when you're super in the colony, your first box, if you have it available, above the queen excluder should be a drawn frame. A drawn out frame with comb in it. Or checkerboarded like I was just talking about. That is ideal. If you put foundation right down against the queen excluder, now you may have to do that if it's your first year or, or you don't have enough availability of comb, but if you have to, you have to, and that's 
back up to the very beginning of the video when I was talking about moving some brood up to encourage the bees to come up above that excluder and then putting the excluder back down, that's an option you can use because sometimes the bees are really reluctant to come up just the foundation, but they will come up if you're coming up the drone comb. So ideally we want to put that first that first super as as drawn out comb. So the next question is probably how many do you put on? Well, I'll tell you, I typically start if we want to talk about we talk about at the beginning different sizes of boxes, right? We have the shallow, medium, and deep, right? So if I if all I'm using is shallows, I open this collar and they're rolling, they're looking pretty good. I'm gonna start off with three supers. There's there's some activity that occurs in a hive that 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 leads me to do just that and to go ahead and put three supers on at a time. So as the foragers come in to the hives, they don't go put the put the honey or the nectar into the actual cell. Those bees come to the entrance, they do a little jiggle and, it, and excite the house bees and the house bees come and offload that nectar from that bee and take it in and start the processing in the comb. If that bee, the forager, comes to the entrance of the hive and the longer it takes for that forager to offload that honey, the less encouraged they are to go back and work more because uh, that, that's kind of a feedback mechanism in the biology of a honeybee that tells them that the hive is full. So if the, if the house bees are having trouble finding somewhere to put it, they're gonna slow down bringing it in. If they're offloading as fast as they're bringing it, they're gonna go back and work more. So we need to have space. And remember that nectar, as it comes in, is not at 18.6% moisture content. It may be as little as 9% sugar. So if the honey, uh, the nectar as it comes in may fill up a lot of space, but then as they process it down, it takes up less space. So we need to make sure they have enough space. And like we were talking about, three shallow supers, that's about 90 pounds of honey. That's a, that's a decent average across most colonies if you have decent colonies. I like to see even more. I mean, we've, we've stacked up four and five supers on colonies, but start off with three and then reevaluate. That's what I do. Now, if you see on this one, this one's supered up. I have a deep up here and I have a medium here. This is a great opportunity in the spring, spring nectar flow that we talked about having the availability of drawn comb. What I like to do here is take brand new foundation, set up in a 10 frame configuration we don't want nine, right? 10 frame configuration. And I put it right here. Remember I put the drone comb first. This is actually checkerboarded, but that's okay. The next, the next box up, I put a deep on with foundation. And what I'm trying to do is on the wildflower honey, because it's really plentiful here where we're at, we're able to get some nice, pretty drawn out comb. Bees draw out comb perfectly on a good nectar flow. And so I'm gonna have some spare comb drawn out so that when I get ready to go in winter, if I need to replace some frames or whatever I need to do or add a deep back to this box, I'll have those extra frames ready to go. And that just helps us to, to set up for winter. And even we may have these frames and use them next spring. So if they're, we extract them out and they're completely empty, it's a great place to use them next spring when we decide to do maybe some splits or, or whatever we're doing, we have drawn out comb for it. So we talked about putting three shallows on where in this configuration, I use the medium and one deep. And that's probably plenty on these colonies right, right now until we see how they do. That's a good amount of space. That's more than, that's more than 30, 60, 90. That, that's more than that um, because the medium holds more than 30 pounds too. So one additional thing is we supered about 10 to 12 days ago. And when we supered, I was getting a few wet shakes in some colonies. You always want to super ahead of the honey flow, not after it started. And the reason for that is we're wanting our bees to peak right when the right when that nectar flow starts. And if we're wanting them to peak at that time and we don't give them a little bit of space, they're going to go into swarm impulse. So we need to go ahead and get that on there. The other thing is they kind of need to get up on this drone comb, clean it up a little bit, make it part of their own, start getting used to going through that queen excluder. And I just feel like it does a better job if we go and get those supers on. Like a, I really prefer to get them on about a week before the flow. We were right on time this year, only three or four days before the, the heavier flow started. But get those supers on timely so that we're not 
getting in a situation where our hives are peaking and we don't have the space for them. So one thing, I, I, I post about it quite often, but here in North Carolina where we're at in the Piedmont, tulip poplar is probably our biggest um, nectar flow that we have. And that's kind of the trigger, it's the beginning of the flow. Blackberry comes a little bit later, but tulip poplar is kind of the kickoff of that main flow. And a lot of times you don't even have to go in the hive to, to know that that flow has begun. As the, as the bees work the tulip poplar tree, the stigma of that, of that um, bloom kind of pops pollen onto their forehead and onto their thorax. And you'll see that with bees coming in, it'll be a really pale, almost whitish yellow, really pale, pale, pale yellow, almost white pollen. And you'll see it on their backs, on their thorax, and you might see it right on the face of their forehead kind of like the hen bit, the red that you see on their forehead in a really early spring. But you can see the bees coming in with that and you'll know, hey, tulip poplar blooms have opened. It's time to get busy if we haven't already supered. And of course, you can see bees running around inside with that too. The other way to tell the nectar flow has started if you're on the inside is like I mentioned, if you have, if you shake a frame, shake the bees off a frame and you shake it and nectar comes out of that frame, that's unprocessed nectar. If you're not feeding, that's, that's, that's light nectar coming in that's not been processed down to the appropriate moisture content. So when you start seeing those wet shakes, the nectar flows on. So we talk about going ahead and putting three supers on, that's the way we do it. And then we come back and evaluate, what are we evaluating? Well, I'm gonna go down the row and I don't go back in the brood box this time of year for the most part, unless I see there's a problem from the outside or open up the colony, there's just not a, lot, not a lot of bees in there or something, something looks off. But other than that, I'm just looking in the tops of these boxes. I, I may, you know, maybe the bees haven't migrated up in this top one. I may lift that one up and look at the next one down and I'm kind of looking, are they putting some nectar away? Are they starting to make some honey? Are they whitening the comb? You'll see the comb start turning really pearly white as they're adding wax to it. Um, that's making some honey. So when do you add the next super or when do you take a super away and put it somewhere else? Well, that's that's really dynamic in the time. You, you gotta kind of learn how your flows run in your area. So as we start nearing the end of the flow, of course you want the bees to finish the supers that are on there, go ahead and finish and cap them. So if we're only maybe a week, week and a half out from the end of what typically is the flow in your area and they still have you know, four frames or so in that super that they, they really don't have any, any honey in, we may not need to add. But say we're three weeks before the end of the flow and our top box is three to four supers, uh, or three to four frames already have a significant amount of nectar in, I'm probably gonna go ahead and add another box. Cause like I said, the more space we have, the easier it is for those house bees to find somewhere to put that nectar. It's easier for it to be, you know, expanded out into, into all the cells and then contracted down as we pull that moisture down. So if I'm looking at this box, again, with three to four weeks left and say they're, they're halfway through or you're pulling frames out, you're pulling frames out and they have, you know, a lot of the comb done a lot of times the bees will start on that outside frame i don't know why they do that they come up the outside walls a lot of times but if you're seeing those frames are pretty well full maybe they've not pulled them out yet i'm going to go ahead and add another box because they have plenty of flow left so let's not miss any of the flow because we don't have space for the house bees to put it so anyway thanks for watching um i hope this helps you kind of understand how to go through this year's uh, nectar flow and get your bees supered up and ready to go. Uh, we'll talk later about how do we take the honey off and, and what the next processes are. Hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.